What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. Caitlyn Jenner is a very popular transgender personality. We know Caitlyn Jenner previously as Bruce Jenner, the gold medalist in the men's decathlon event at the 1976 Summer Olympic Games. And Bruce Jenner is an American icon. I would argue that as Caitlyn Jenner, still an American icon. And even Caitlyn Jenner got, I think, the ESPN um, Award of the Year a few years ago. That was very controversial for Athlete of the Year, something like that. But Caitlyn Jenner is one of the advocates of the transgender community. Okay? And, and I want people to know that just like any other community, the black community, the political communities, the medical community, even though you're all scientists, let's say for example, those who are ecologists or geneticists, um, they all have arguments about if viruses are alive, okay, or dead. You know, and, and this is the thing that we have to understand. Even the scientific community, there are differences of opinion. There are differences of opinion amongst those people who are doctors regarding COVID-19. And see, just because somebody is LGBT or gay or transgender, that doesn't mean that they all agree. Okay? There are even gays who didn't believe in gay marriage. Caitlyn Jenner has come out to defend Dave Chappelle on his transgender stance. And it's not about you know, standing with the transgender community because I'm transgender. Caitlyn Jenner said that this woke culture, cancel culture is running amok trying to silence free speech. Jenner says we must never yield or bow to those who wish to stop us from speaking our minds. That's the argument here. This is not about sexuality or hate speech or what your sexual orientation is. What we're talking about is somebody's right to say something and somebody else trying to stop it and giving their opinion. That's why I believe that we're dealing with on this tangent and that's why I'm staying. And despite the problems that the United States has, and I am a person that is a pro-black, very strong Pan-African leanings. A Pan-African, I'm one of the more stronger ones on this platform. Let me tell me just say something real quick. One thing that America allows to a certain degree is a level of freedom of speech. The democracy in America is what has made the country livable. It's made it great. It's made it, although it's been problematic, accepting one's sexuality or being able to deal with it or not disrespecting them accepting or denying or accepting or, or tolerating one's race one's religion that's what makes america so great now if you were to go to some place like I, i've been in uganda I, i've been in certain parts of africa uh, you're not allowed to say what you want to say about certain governments god forbid you're in samuel Doe's liberia okay or you were in edi means uganda or you're in china you say the wrong thing and then you disappear. All right. And, and, and this is what the cancel culture is, 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 is being equivalent to. The, the ability to cancel you and, and, and kill your uh, potential, potential to earn money in the future. Okay. To kill your potential to do business in the future so that nobody will touch you. Even if you're not disrespecting people because of them being LGBT or them being trans. And there are a lot of people who are tired of this kind of stuff, right? This woke culture, it's a lot of gays who are tired of it. It's trans who are tired of it. You have liberals. It's to the point now where you have Democrats like, okay, listen, some liberals. This has gotten out of hand. And let me tell you what happens when one group has the authority to say everything and do everything and others don't. 
you get what they call in France a military coup. Now, this is not going to happen in the government of the United States, but what I'm saying is you get people who get overthrown. And if you don't believe me, I, I will talk about um, some of our, our, our brothers and our ancestors who became the American Liberians in Liberia. Now, if any of you guys know about the story of Liberia, in 1822, starting at that time, freed slaves in the American colonization society resettled our people there. Most of them were African-American, some were Caribbean. But all of us came to join into one ethnic group called the Americo Liberians. Okay? And from 1847 on to 1980, one party ruled the entire country called the True Whig Party. It was complete dominance, complete nepotism. It was what they say goes. Okay? You abided by what they said. But one day on April 12th, 1980, the late great president William Tolbert was disemboweled in his office at age 67. And then 13, including his brother, people 10 days later were all put to a stake. We won't show it here. And then they were executed. You can see, you can see it right here on YouTube. It's one of the most gruesome things that you can ever see. What am I trying to say here? That oppression of thought came back to haunt you and those who were in power were no longer in power in fact their families had to flee the country what i'm saying is whoever has the power to oppress thought it works for just so long until people get tired of it and people rebel you know and i and i think that as people in the country we have to really look at history and see how people who have been able to oppress others or if people feel like they're being oppressed because the culture is canceled, then those people too, those people end up being canceled themselves. It's best to let people say what's on their mind and get it out because it's not going to change how they feel. But what is good is that in this country, I've understood that I got older. There are going to be people that are going to be gay. There are going to be people who are racist. And I'm not trying to put people, gay people, in the same terms as racist. But there are people who are going to, who are going to be liberal. There are people who are going to be atheists. Okay? There are people who are going to be whatever. People who are going to be uh, very good people. People who are going to be heterosexual and be bad people. All of these things are people that are going to exist. You can't stop it. But if people can respect each other. Even if they have different opinions of each other before they talk to each other, you can get to some form of reasoning. If we try to understand where people are coming from and agree to disagree and be civil, because that's the one thing that God gave humans over other animals is the ability to do that. Let people say what they, and I'm so far as to go even to the extreme. I believe that you should get people who do not like each other. Historically, I don't care if it's uh, people who have certain tribal beefs, people who have certain racial beefs. If you can let them say what they have to say and get it out, you might see less tensions in the world. At least if I can agree to be like, I'll go on my side and you stay on yours, and we'll do our best not to even bother each other. That's even something, that's, that's, that's something you're getting accomplished. Other than cancel that person for just how they feel and they're not being offensive. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I really appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. Check out the first comment at the top. And as you know, the buffoon remains at an all-time high. I'm out.